All right, before I get started with the code, I want to show you where we're headed. So what we what I'm what we're really doing in this video is we're creating uh, a class that will that will show our contacts and it's creating a list a ul of our contacts and so when i click on dopey dwarf for example the image is going to change and we're going to display from an array that has objects in it the uh, first name and last name and then change the image and then i'm going to click on snow white and i'm going to change the image and um, display the first and last name. Now this is similar to what we did with the image swapping, except much more efficient code and utilizing objects and classes that we've been learning in this, so this uh, chapter. So we're going to create a address book using some of the concepts, a lot of the concepts we've been working on so far. So if you've downloaded the starter files that I provided you, you should have a folder with seven dwarfs in it, as well as Snow White. We're gonna create an address book, and in our address book, we're gonna have these particular characters. I've created an app.js for you, which has some things that we're gonna go over, and an index page, which obviously relates. Uh, kind of other things, if you want to participate with what I've got going on here, I have something called Live Server installed. So if you want to search for Live Server, um, this would be the um, package that I've installed. And Live Server will register the changes automatically so I don't have to keep hitting the refresh key. So that's kind of nice. The other thing that I will be doing or that I've selected is if you look under File, there's this option that says Autosave. And that prevents me from having to do control S every time. So uh, every time I make a change, auto save will automatically save my change and live server is going to refresh that change. So those are some of the little bells and whistles I have installed here ahead of time. Uh, I can also see that I can't see all of my code here. So I'm gonna come down to view and toggle wrap. So those all show up on the screen. I think I'll do the same thing here so that we can see the code all together. So, all right. So now that we've got kind of things laid out the way I want to get started, let's look at some of the code that I've already created and review what it's doing or what the story is. All right, so HTML is pretty straightforward. I'll let you look that over. But what I've created is I've created an object, or uh, not sorry, I've created a class, and that class is a blueprint of my contacts. And so as a name of my blueprint or my class, I gave it the name contacts and it's got a capital C by convention. So by convention, our blueprint or our class names are usually capitalized. I've created this special function called constructor and constructor runs at the time a new object is instantiated. At that time, I ask, the calling code to provide some data for me and I want the code to send me the name the last name this is the first name the last name the email and the string which represents the source file of the contact so at the time that a class is instantiated the property name is filled from whatever got sent over the property last is filled from the argument that was sent at the time of instantiation, email, and the picture. I also have a method that I created called update contact, and this method is creating a local variable to this method only, and I called it contact div. From there, I'm getting a hold of get element by ID name, and name, if you look at get element by ID name, is where I'm going to be putting in, you can see it's an H1. Well, I'll put in the name of the, um, the name of the contact. I have, uh, I'm, here I'm setting the inner HTML to this object's name. Remember that it's referring to this object's property and this object's last name. So. I'm also updating the image source. 
So the idea here is that if a, if someone, well, let's see, let's just walk through it. I know this is kind of confusing, but hopefully as we go through the example, this will start to make sense. So just recognize that the idea behind this method is if I'm calling this object, so if I'm calling Snow White, we'll, we'll just look at it right here. So I'm creating a new object. I'm calling it contact one. That new object is going to have a first name of Snow, last name of White. Here's Snow White's email address. And here's the string, which is the source to her, um, to her image. So if I look at the code, at the time that I instantiate this object, snow gets put into the parameter name, which gets put into the property. So I have two contacts currently. One is Snow White, one is Dopey, and I've put those two contacts into an array. So if I were to run this code right now, nothing is happening, but I'm going to right click and choose inspect element and go into console just to kind of see what I have a hold of here. So in my console, I'm going to see what is in contact one. And you can see that one contact one is an object because we created it from this class. I'm going to click on the little drop down. The object has a property called email. And there's the information and last and name and pick. So this is the information that I sent over to the constructor when I first created this object. It looks like it also there you can see the constructor class. So there's and then the update, which is all of that information. I don't know how far we can dig down into that. A lot more than I probably want to. So let's just stop there. All right. So Let's also look and see what is in contacts. So I'm going to type in contacts. This is a great tool to use so that way you can really see what it is you're sending to the browser. So in contacts, it says I have an array. I hit enter. If I click on the drop down for the array, I can see I have an array with zero, one. So I have index zero, index one, and both of those are an object. And these are the objects that we created. So I have two objects, one named contact one, none named contact two. And each of those objects was created from my constructor, which is a member of my blueprint or my class context. All right, so my next task is going to be on the right hand side here. I'm going to display in a bulleted list all of the contacts that I have in my array. So I have to get at, I'm going to get at each individual item in my array. So I'm going to have to get to this object and display the name. I'm going to have to get to this object and display the name. So I can see that that's a great place for a for loop. So let me walk through the code and try to break down what I'm doing here. You can see that it that I'm getting a bulleted list with Snow White and Dopey Dwarf. So let's see what's happening. So I've created a variable called string contacts. And in that variable, I'm starting my UL. So let me look in and inspect and verify that this is working the way I thought. So let me go into here. You can see my UL was created. And now I needed to create the li. So as I loop through each element in my array, element zero, element one, I get contact one. And if I'm curious, let's see, let me go into console and let me display what contact one is, contact one. And in contact one, which is the first element of my array, I have name, last, these are the two properties that I want to print out. So li value equals, and here I'm keeping track of the i. So the reason for that is this value is keeping track of the fact that zero is this object. And we'll see how this comes to, into play very shortly. But let me try and reiterate that. 
So value equals zero because I need to keep track of the fact that Snow White is object number zero. And we'll see that when we create a click event, you'll see where this comes into play. So right now, just recognize that I've created a value that is equal to the element ID, in other words, zero and one of each of these LIs, each of these, um, each of these loops, right? So Snow White is element zero and value one is Dopey Dwarf. Okay, so as we loop through, we I concatenated a string. I kept adding to the string by using plus equals. So whatever used to be in a string concats, which started off with UL, add to it. Then I use that literal string, li value equals, and then I use zero, contacts name, and then contacts last. So that's the first and last name. And after I was done creating the li's, I concatenated the closing UL. And then document get element by ID contact, enter HTML. So we go to our contact list, which was right here. And we're going to plop in that string that we created. So I'm pretty sure we can come in here and we let's just look at string contacts. And if you look at string contacts, that which we created, you can see that we just created a string with LIs in it. And that's what's actually writing to our HTML page. All right, so now we're going to do something a little bit different, similar but a little bit different. So the idea here now is that I want to click on one of these names. And when I click on Snow White, for example, I'm going to change the image source and I'm going to display the, um, the, like the email and that kind of a thing. So her first name, her last name, and her email is the idea. Then if I click on Dopey Dwarf, this image needs to change and Dopey Dwarf needs to show up in the contact information. And so I'm going to create a click event, but in the past what we've done is we have kind of did an on click or we did a get element by ID. I'm going to show you something a little bit different that's even better than what we've done before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a click event for, uh, for my All right, I'm going to create a click event for document. Like, how, how are we going to determine which li was clicked so we know which object it was, so we know which to change our context to? So, I don't know, but that's where I'm headed. So, get element by ID, and I'm going to select contact list, which we already have above here, but that's okay, because I'm on a different thought pattern here. So get contact list and then add event listener and we're going to do a click and then what we've done before is we've created some anonymous function that we're going to do something with but let's see what happens so if I look at contact list contact list is a div and in our div is where our li is so if we click anywhere in our div which happens to be different li's different elements in in our div then it's going to fire off this event. Let's just see that happen. Alert, um, fired. Let's just do this step by step. So now if I click anywhere in here, that event is going to shoot. Well, how do I know then which one of these, which one did the, the user click? Well, I'm going to show you something we haven't had before and we have now. I'm going to put in here E, okay? E can be anything, it's just an argument. It, it can be anything, I don't care what you call it. You, but what it actually is, is the element that clicked, that fired off this event. What? Okay, bear with me. So let's do a console log, and I'm gonna console log what E is. So let's go to inspect element, and go to our console, all right. So console log E, so I'm gonna click on Snow White. So when I clicked on Snow White, I got back an object. How do I know it's an object? Well, first of all, look at the, parent, the open and close curly braces. So the browser sent me back an object. What was the object? Well, it says target is LI. 
I'm going to click on this drop down. We've got a lot of things that got returned to us in this E. So what happens, the only thing we can send to this function, when the click event happens, the click event sends into this function the element that got clicked. And we can catch it by putting a, some kind of a parameter in here. And then we've got a hold of it. So when we log E, we have a hold of the element that got clicked. In this case, the element was an li. And if we look at all of the properties of this object that is E, so E is an object that the browser is sending to us that has all kinds of extra properties. You can see all these properties that we have no idea how to use. One of the things it sends back is this target that it was an li and the value was equal to zero. So that's interesting. So I'm going to click on target. So there's more things inside of target. There's more properties. So this is actually, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let's do this. Um, let's see if there is Ah, there is an inner HTML property. So somehow we might be able to get that inner HTML property. So let's go back, let's kind of back up again. So if I type in console log target, we should get li. Let's try that. So console log target. And now I'm going to save that. Oh, oh, I forgot my E. Somehow I just erased the E. So Let's now refresh. It refreshed automatically. Let's click on Dopey this time. So if I click on Dopey, I'm getting, I'm drilling down into that object with that dot notation. And now I've got li. So li was clicked. And if I scroll down more to the properties that are now available to me, one of them is inner HTML. So if I now type in inner HTML, now I should get just the item that I clicked on. Okay, So by using this neat little feature that click automatically sends to us, using the e.target and then whatever properties we want to get to uh, is very handy. So now I don't have to be so concerned about who did I click on it. I can catch it. Let's see. Let's try. Um, value. So now if I click on Snow White, I get value 0. Now remember that that value 0, what I'm using it for is to keep track of which object in the array it was. So now I know it's this object. And if I click on Dopey, then I know that it's object of 1. So why would I care about that? Well, check this out. If I know which object I'm using, in other words, I know that e target value is zero, in code then I programmatically have a hold of one of these two objects. In other words, let's see how can I show you this. So let's do this. Um, let's do uh, what is our array? Our array is contacts. So now let's console log contacts. And then remember that etarget.value is returning the index of that array. So now if I click on one of these, now I have a hold of that entire Snow White object. If I click on this one, I have a hold of the entire dopey object. So now that I have a hold of that, I'm going to, well, I can leave that on there. Let's call that object's update contact method. So now I can do contacts of, I'm just going to copy all of this in. So that's going to return the index value. And then, now that I've got a hold of that object, I can get, well, I have some extra, extra, extra going on here. Contacts. Oh, there we go. Oh, I have too many contacts here, sorry. So, 
contacts, target value, so contacts of zero. So contacts of zero is Snow White, contacts of zero of one would be Dopey. And we're gonna call the update, what was it, update contact. So if we use update contact, we're calling that object's contact method, which is then going to do all of these updates, calling its own object's property values. So let's see if that works. I'm gonna slide this down. And if it works, we should see Dopey's information. And then if we click on Snow White, we should see Snow White's information. So the last piece of this puzzle that I'm going to give you to help you do your project for this week is this. Let's say I wanted to add a new object into my contacts array. So just like we've done before, I'm going to create contact three equals, I'm going to create a new contact. I'm going to utilize the blueprint that is provided above called new contacts. And this time I'm going to create, let's see, I'm going to look in my images here and I have, let's do bashful. So close that back up. Contacts. So the first thing, remember that I need to send, I need to send the first name, which is bashful. The last name, which I'm sure is dwarf. I need to send the email address, which is bdwarf at cottage. I don't know, I just made these up in case you weren't sure. And then I need to send in the string that represents the source, the image source, which was uh, bashful.png. Okay, so how do I add that onto the array? Well, I would do something like this, uh, contacts. If we use a method that, oh, con that array provides us, and if I look down here on, there's something called push. And push says, whatever is in the parentheses, append that to the end of the array. In other languages, it might be the word append, but in this language, it's the word push. So if we push contact three onto the end of our array, we should now, be able to, oh, it doesn't like my word contact, sorry. I looked at my error there. Okay, so now I'm going to refresh my page. It's not showing up in the bullets yet, so I'm going to leave that to you to figure out how to refresh that. But just to see that that worked, let me look at my contacts now at the end of our code contacts now is an array with three elements in it. So if I hit enter, I'm going to click on the little drop down and I can see in fact that there are now three, zero, one, two, uh, and we have three objects, index zero, one, and two. So somehow now you're going to have to refresh this code, I'm going to somehow run this code again. So that way it'll automatically pick up all the new contact. It'll append, it'll create the new LIs with the zero, one, two, and two this time. And then the new name will show up and everything else should just work because contact three has a update contact. So everything should just work the way it did before. So I'm gonna leave that challenge up to you. So that is putting a lot of things that we have been working on into practice. And I will pause this video and show you what I'd hope for as an end result. Actually, I'm gonna end this video and then I'll put it in another screen. Okay, well, see you at the other video then.